Are you ready to hustle? I need to hustle, hustle. Welcome to The Hustle with Justin Harrison, the ultimate podcast for money, motivation, and inspiration. In this season of The Hustle Podcast, we're talking to solo entrepreneurs and small business owners and tackling their personal finance and entrepreneurial questions. And today, we're talking to Warren, all the way from Peter Maritzburg. Warren, welcome to The Hustle Podcast. I know that you've got questions for us. Let's dive right in. How's it, Justin? My first question is, how do you deal with customer dissatisfaction when you actually can't get to them on time? I know we try and keep up, keep them in the loop and everything like that, but sometimes the technicians take longer on a, on a specific job than they should do, and they just don't get there on time, and then you know the customer gets upset. You're just finding it more and more and more that customers are really haven't got that kind of patience anymore. Yeah, so Warren, I think, you know, it's it's a difficult thing, especially in the service industry where you are dealing with emergencies um, or you're dealing with very urgent situations. And I think, you know, the first thing I would say is you've got to manage expectations. The first part of managing expectations is obviously communication. And like you said, you are trying to do that as best as possible. I think also sometimes, and this is the hard part for South African businesses to understand and accept, sometimes you have to le- let certain business go. If you cannot service the business, if you cannot get there on time because you're stuck on other jobs, sometimes you actually have to say, well, listen, let's give that to a competitor. Let's get somebody else on the job. Let's figure out a way to get the customer serviced, even if we don't earn out of it. Because at the end of the day, your reputation is worth a lot more than trying to hang on to a job and botching it because you can't get there on time. The other thing, of course, is to manage your staff and to say to your staff, look, you guys need to check in with me. You need to communicate with me on your current job. We need to know exactly how far you are, how long you're expecting it to take. And then the other thing I always tell people to do in business is to try and under promise and over deliver. And this is a very simple strategy. So if you know that your technicians are probably going to be there in the next two hours, tell them that you anticipate they're going to be there in the next three and a half hours. It buys you time. If the client on their side says, well, look, we can't wait three and a half hours, that gives you the opportunity to manage that expectation. And if you can't then get somebody on site within the desired time for the client, then unfortunately you have to try and figure out how to get somebody else to service that client. Because at the end of the day, it is only going to frustrate your relationship with the client and it's only going to frustrate your reputation in the market. And this is something that's very hard for small businesses to manage. But unfortunately, sometimes you have to say no to some work. That is just the reality of business. Thanks. The next thing is when I technician goes to site and he does his job and gets a job card signed and it gets invoiced from the office. What is a reasonable time to expect payment, considering that we are a COD business? So, I mean, in the case of a COD business, you actually expect the client to pay immediately before the technicians leave. That is the reality of it. And, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of customers are frustrated by this. A lot of businesses are frustrated by the fact that they're not getting paid on time. There's all the excuses. You know, it used to be in the olden days, a check is in the mail. Now it's the admin lady's not around or the second authorization is not there. There's always an excuse. So I need to, I need to go back to the first principle of business. The first principle of business is to make money. The first principle of business is to get paid. If you're not getting paid, then that person is not a customer. So this is the way you have to look at it. And so if you have repeat offenders, if you know that you've got customers who don't always pay you on time, then you've got to consider not servicing them because at the end of the day, a customer who's not paying is not, a, is not a customer. And in addition to which, you land up financing their business, and that's not fair on you as a small business owner. What I would say is in terms of managing COD payments, you've got a couple of choices. If you're going to insist on COD, then you have to have a very strong COD policy. That COD policy means once we have delivered product or service, we need to be paid before we will leave premises. We will not leave premises until we have a proof of payment to prove that you have paid and payment has been initiated. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can continue to do this through the traditional EFT model, get the invoice done immediately, get the person to EFT immediately. The alternative is to start introducing alternative payment methods, things like Zapper, things like where they can basically do geo payments immediately. But you want to make sure that your technicians don't leave site without payments. And you have to insist on that if you're going to run as a COD business. If you're going to offer terms, and terms is basically when you leave the premises, you haven't been paid. That's immediately terms. People say that's COD. No, it's not. You're on a terms business. 
if you're going to offer terms, your terms have to be very, very strict. Maybe it's three days, maybe it's five days, maybe it's seven days, but you have to set the precedent by making sure that people pay you on time and saying that, listen, we're not going to come out and service you again if you don't pay on time. And we are going to hand over accounts that aren't paid. And you need to become very strict and set a precedent by it. And what you will find by setting that precedent is you will eliminate all the bad players. You'll eliminate the naughty children. You'll get them out of your books and you'll start focusing on the clients that are actually making you money. Because what a lot of people don't realize when they start looking at their revenue streams, you'll realize that 80% of your revenue probably comes from 20% of your customer base. And so you spend a whole bunch of time on customers that are bad at paying, that waste your time, that complain. The best customers pay on time and actually complain the least. And this is the truth of business. Nobody wants to admit it because in the South African sense, we're just so desperate to hang on to every little business we can. And so I would highly suggest that you take a very aggressive approach to your payments. If you're going to do COD, insist that your technicians do not leave until they've been paid. If you're going to offer terms, you need to enforce those terms very strictly. Yeah, you, you see the, the with new goods, we insist on payment up, up front. But it's just mainly like when the guys actually go out to service and we only get the job cards when they come back. Sorry to interrupt, Warren, but there's your problem right there, right? So your bottleneck right there is that the job cards, you're having to wait to get them back at the office in order to be able to invoice. That problem is so easily resolved. I'm sure every single one of your technicians has got a phone. I'm pretty sure they can take a picture of the job card. I'm pretty sure they can WhatsApp it through to the admin lady and the admin lady can draw up an invoice almost immediately. And that is a very simplistic way of doing it. A more intelligent way is actually to get a proper system in place that as a technician is on site, they're logging up their job card, they're fixing whatever needs to be done, they're logging it as part of the work delivered, and then obviously that's going through to the admin lady, and literally they don't leave before that invoice has been received, signed for, and paid for. And you have to become that aggressive because you have to understand if you don't fix your processes on your side, then there is an excuse as to why the customer doesn't pay because the customer will say, well, I didn't receive the invoice yet or we haven't received a full report of the job card yet. So you need to take all those objections out by having efficient systems in place. All right. Thanks. And finally, the last question I've got here is um, we have a couple of corporate customers where they like to pay 30 days from statement. And sometimes it's, they inquire about quite big orders and we can't unfortunately carry them. So what is, what do you suggest in, in the case of corporate customers that drag the heels on paying? So, I mean, this is my bread and butter. I mean, our businesses are essentially enterprise to enterprise. We deal mainly with large corporates and I will come back to saying the same thing I said at the start of this, uh, the session, which is a customer who doesn't pay you is not a customer. And so corporates definitely abuse small businesses. They use them as a line of credit. They definitely won't do it with larger institutional businesses because the penalties are severe. Corporates know they can mess around the small business owner. And so consequently, they do. What you need to do is you need to have a pit bull on your side chasing down the money. And if it becomes an absolute nightmare and the people aren't paying and the customers are not coming through with those timely payments and there's ongoing excuses, you need to look at it and go, is this a customer? Because at the end of the day, somebody who's not paying is not a customer. And if you go to 60 days, you start going to 90 days, nine times out of 10, you're financing that in your own bank account through an overdraft. You're financing it through your own line of credit. And now all of a sudden, if you, let's say, paying 13 or 14% interest, and you're only making 20% on the job, you're actually working for 6%, plus the frustration of it, plus the opportunity cost of not going after other business. So, you know, again, I'll come back to this thing of saying, this is nothing that you're going to fix by fixing the individual customer. This is nothing you're going to fix by fixing process alone. You need to look at the customer and say, if this customer is not a good payer, if this customer isn't timely with their remittance, then perhaps we need to let them go. And it's a tough thing for businesses to hear because, you know, a small business doesn't understand the idea of firing customers. My first rule when it comes to payments is fire the customers who don't pay. Customers who don't pay are not customers. They are a liability and worse than a liability. They've not just cost you money. They've cost you time, effort and energy as well. And that's something that no small business can afford. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. If you found value from this episode of the Hustle Podcast, be sure to hit that follow, subscribe button, depending on your platform, to make sure that you never miss any of my uploads. Also, if you are appreciating the content, please drop me a review on your favorite podcasting app. It goes a long way to helping people discover this podcast and helps us help more people. 
And remember, hustle makes muscle. Stay motivated by The Hustle. Talkers talk, but hustlers hustle. Find more episodes at ecr.co.za or your favorite podcast app.